You're watching Tag TV. Welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you with fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. lashkar e taiba terrorists killed an anti-terror operation in Jammu and Kashmir's Rajouri district. Five army personnel also lose their lives. Israel declares Lashkar e Taiba as terror organization ahead of 15th anniversary of Mumbai attack. And three persons killed in explosion in Balochistan. Locals accuse army of killing youths. Let's begin the show with India's Jammu and Kashmir, where a top Lashkar e Taiba terrorist was killed in a fierce encounter with security forces. Five army personnel also lost their lives in the operation. The Rajori encounter has once again shown that the terrorists in the Jammu and Kashmir region are unable to face security forces in urban environments and are now choosing dense shrubs and forest areas to engage them. A report. A fierce encounter took place in Jammu and Kashmir's Rajouri district between terrorists and security forces in which two Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists were neutralized. However, five army personnel also lost their lives in the operation. A joint operation was initiated in the Kalakot area and Gulabgar forests based on specific intelligence. One of the killed terrorists has been identified as Kari, a Pakistani national who held a high rank within the Lashkar-e-Taiba. As per reports, Kari was an expert in IEDs, operating and hiding from caves, and a trained sniper. Reports say Kari was trained on the Pakistan and Afghan front. Kari had been active in Rajouri Poonch along with his groups for the past year and is also believed to be the mastermind of some previous attacks in the region. A red link ceremony was conducted in Rajouri to honor the five army personnel who lost their lives. The Rajouri encounter has once again shown that terrorists in the Jammu and Kashmir region, unable to face security forces in urban environments, are now choosing dense shrubs to engage them. वो एक ऐसा इलाका है जहाँ पे वो बड़ा घने shrubs हैं. जंगल अलग होता है श्रब्स अलग होते हैं श्रब्स हो गए आपके छोटे छोटे झाड़ियाँ झाड़ी झाड़ी झाड़ियाँ इतनी हैं वहाँ पे और उसके साथ में नेचुरल हाइड्रोट्स बहुत हैं वहाँ पे तो ये जो नेचुरल हाइड्रोट्स हैं उसके अंदर अगर कोई छुप के बैठा आप उसके साथ में खड़े भी होंगे आपको पता नहीं लगेगा कि इसमें छुपा हुआ है तो यही हुआ है इसके अंदर जब पता लगा है हमारे जो इतला आई है जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस को और उसके बाद में सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज वहाँ घेराबंदी के लिए गए हैं तो उन्होंने ये जो है जिससे पहले कि वो इनको लोकेट करते वो उन्होंने इनको अम्बुश कर लिया After the operation, the Indian Army shared pictures of a small cave being used by terrorists as a hideout in the forest of the Rajouri. According to security forces, this small cave is being used by terrorists as a hideout in the forest of Rajouri area. Such hideouts are relatively difficult to detect and breach. Terrorists are changing their strategy, posing a new security challenge in Jammu and Kashmir. Some defense experts believe that Indian forces need to execute their plan in more aggressive way to counter park back terrorism. Our strategy needs to undergo a change. They are only reacting. Pakistan continues to infiltrate and we only react and try and eliminate them. We need to change the strategy and become proactive. What that involves is known to the powers that be and unless and until we do that and increase the cost to pakistan by an order of magnitude this will continue pakistan aims to ensure that the indian army and other security forces remain increasingly engaged in counter terrorism operations in kashmir for pakistan a crisis in jammu and kashmir constitutes an outlet for the frustration at home Pakistan uses this tactic for the mobilization of the masses but despite all these people they are ready to revolt against the dispensation
While taking India's war against terrorism a step further, the German Kashmir police along with the local administration employed a rather different strategy to counter the nexus of terror recruitment. Designed in the form of a grievance redressal program, the initiative will be solving any problem that the general public of Union territory may be facing. The initiative aims aimed at stopping the nexus of terror recruitment at its source. We have this report. Pakistan has always carried the mal intention of disrupting peace and tranquility in the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. However, the defense forces in Jammu and Kashmir have ensured that their joint efforts continue to counter the menace of terrorism in the Union territory. R. R. Swain, the recently appointed Director General of Police of Jammu and Kashmir, has employed a rather different yet effective technique to counter the nexus of terror recruitment in the valley. The DGP organized the first ever Janata Darbar as a form of grievance redressal program for the common public of Jammu and Kashmir. Intended to solve the problems of the people, this program will fulfill a dual objective. On one hand, it will solve problems that the people of Jammu and Kashmir may be facing. On the other hand, it will make people less vulnerable to terror recruiters who tend to take advantage of any vulnerabilities or grievances of people and lure them into working for them. मेरे लिए भी एक एक्सपेरिमेंट है ये पर इसके एक मैसेज वैल्यू है एक कनेक्शन की लोगों के साथ एक कनेक्शन की एक एफर्ट है और इसकी सब्सटेंटिव रिजल्ट्स भी मुझे लगता है है इसमें मुझे भी पता रहेगा कि किस किस्म की चीजें जो है पुलिस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में अफेक्ट करता है जिसमें ग्रिफांसेस होते हैं कैटेगरी डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ ग्रिफांसेस और कंप्लेंट्स उसके बारे में जानकारी मुझे रहेगी तो ये एक कम्युनिटी एफर्ट रहेगा तो मुझे लगता है इसमें कमी आएगी और इस तरीके की हादसा जो है वो होएगी ही नहीं हर रिक्रूटमेंट को हम मानेंगे कि एक टेरर एक्ट हो गया वो बंदा विक्टिम है उस वक्त और आगे चल के फिर वो खुद ही एक ऑफेंडर बन जाता है ईच एक्ट ऑफ रिक्रूटमेंट विल बी ट्रिटेड एज एन एक्ट ऑफ टेरर बट इन विच The people who decide to or have helped or facilitated this boy, this youngster, to join the terrorist ranks are uh, equally liable, if not more. Uh, so there would be a there would be a sustained action against people who motivate and recruit. Not just being limited to countering terror recruitment, India's counterterrorism efforts are designed in such a way. that no form of terrorism support system is able to survive the counter terrorism initiative by new delhi also includes strict countering of narco terrorism and illegal weapon smuggling that terror handlers in pakistan have been continuously pushing into jammu and kashmir as it is a major source of income for the terror elements in the union territory but an intricately designed counter terrorism network is ready to counter every evil intention of pakistan ab jab aap heroin ya brown sugar ya cocaine aata hai par se aur wo to zeher hai aur usi zeher ko bech ke phir logon ki paise se logon ko marne ka jo silsila hai aur kharab karne ka silsila hai ye bilkul bardasht ke layak nahi hoga इसमें जो भी मुलवस पाया जाएगा उसमें पुलिस के अंदर या सिक्योरिटी एस्टेब्लिशमेंट के अंदर या सोसाइटी के कोई भी हिस्से में अगर कोई भी किसी भी तरह से बंदा फैसिलिटेट करना फैसिलिटेट करने का हमें कोई भी आवास मिलेगा कोई भी सबूत मिलेगी हम समझते हैं कि हम उसके खिलाफ बहुत ज़बरदस्त तरीके से कार्रवाई करेंगे खासकर जो सोच रहे हैं कि पैसा बना के बड़े बड़े घर बना के और गाड़ी घोड़ा बना के वो इससे निकल जाएंगे वो हम उसी पर ही अटैक करेंगे हम पेडलर्स के ऊपर और छोटे रिटेल बेचने वालों के ऊपर अभी फोकस नहीं करेंगे हम वो होलसेल डीलर्स जो हैं जिन लोगों ने करोड़ों कमाया है उन्हीं के ऊपर अटैक करेंगे उन्हीं के ऊपर हमला करेंगे 
उनके ऊपर इनकम टैक्स से लेकर इन्फोर्समेंट डायरेक्टोरेट से लेकर हमारी एन से लेकर एस से लेकर जिला पुलिस सबों की ताकत इकट्ठा करेंगे उन्हीं लोगों के खिलाफ के उन्हीं लोगों के खिलाफ उनको हम तहस दहस कर देंगे Rigorous and continuous efforts and carefully designed multi-leveled counterterrorism mechanisms even in the past have ensured peace and security in Jammu and Kashmir foiling attempts by Pakistan backed terror groups to spread unrest in the region And ahead of the 2611 Mumbai attacks 15th anniversary Israel designated Pakistan based terrorist group Lashkar-e-Taiba as a terror organization according to a formal statement from Tel Aviv the action is consistent with Israel's efforts to back an international campaign against terrorism 15 years ago Mumbai had witnessed a deadly terror attack which killed 166 people including 5 Israeli citizens a report On 26 November 2008 one of the deadliest terror attacks was carried out on Indian soil that led to the deaths of 166 people in Mumbai including foreign nationals The attacks which lasted for 3 days left almost 300 injured The attacks were carried out by 10 Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists who sailed into Mumbai from the Pakistani port city of Karachi Terrorists targeted different centers including Nariman House business and residential complex that left 6 Israelis dead. The building was home to a Shabad House, a Jewish outreach center. 9 Pakistani terrorists were killed by the Indian security forces. Ajmal Kasab was the only terrorist who was captured alive. He was hanged 4 years later on November 21, 2012 after a trial. Never before had Jews in India been the target of attack for any terrorist group. 15 years after the brutal attack on Mumbai, Israel has declared Lashkar-e-Taiba a terrorist organization. An official announcement from Tel Aviv informed that the move is in sync with Israel's efforts to support a global war on terror. I think for a long time we've been sharing uh, know-how on uh, combating terrorism. We remember the Mumbai horrific attacks and uh, how the Jewish community uh, was attacked in Mumbai as as well as many many from the non-Jewish community and we always express sorrow and we when we re- remember that uh there, there's a lot of issues to share. We share in science and technology, we share in doing good to the world in medicine. We have a great message as two great ancient nations how to contribute to the world and there's a lot of mutual admiration. Israel claimed that it had added Lashkar-e-Taiba to its list of banned terrorist organizations without the Indian government's request and that it had complied with all legal requirements. The statement said that the Israeli Minister of Defense and Foreign Affairs have jointly worked in the last few months to expedite and felicitate the listing of Lashkar-e-Taiba on their state to highlight the importance of a unified global front in combating terrorism. Lashkar-e-Taiba is one of the most dangerous terrorist groups operating in South Asia. With global vision and international ambitions, Lashkar-e-Taiba justifies collaboration with other terror groups. Lashkar-e-Taiba has diversified network for mobilizing resources. Recently, Lashkar-e-Taiba was named and shamed by US Secretary of State Antony Blinken at UN. All acts of terrorism are unlawful and unjustifiable. They're unlawful and unjustifiable whether they target people in Nairobi or Bali, in Luxor, Istanbul or Mumbai, in New York or Kibbutz or Kibbutz Berry they're unlawful and unjustifiable whether they're carried out by ISIS by Boko Haram by Al Shabab by Lashkar-e Taiba or by Hamas Pakistan has been supporting terror groups like Lashkar-e Taiba and other terror groups for several decades it should be held accountable for aiding and abetting terrorism
And now let's talk about Balochistan, a province where the common people continue to face atrocities at the hands of the Pakistan army. Facing torture and forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings, these people also live in continuous fear of life-threatening terror attacks orchestrated by an unknown foe. A recent terror attack in Kech district of Balochistan has yet again brought the matter of inhumane treatment of the Baloch community to the center stage proving that the condition of the Baloch community is not going to improve any time soon. Balochistan's security situation continues to deteriorate by the day. A recent attack in the province's Ketch district was yet another addition to the targeted killings of Baloch individuals. The deceased, who are identified as Muhammad Adil, Shah Jahan and Nabidad, were reportedly traveling in a car for a family function. However, experts claim that the Pakistani army, which is supposed to protect the general public, is the one responsible for death and destruction in the occupied province. Last night, Pakistani forces took a vehicle with three previously abducted Baloch individuals in it, planted a bomb on a roadside, then exploded that vehicle resulting in the murder of these three innocent individuals. This is inhuman. This is a madness that Pakistani forces are committing in Balochistan. Balochistan has witnessed Pakistani war crimes in form of kill and dump policy from two decades. Thousands of Baloch youth, individuals, activists, journalists have been killed following this policy conducted by Pakistani forces. Contrary to the propaganda that the army is trying to push supporting the non-existence of its atrocities on the Baloch community, reports from human rights organizations like Bank prove that atrocities on Balochis continue to grow severe. The latest report published by Bank about atrocities inflicted by the Pakistani army on Balochistan's people said that there were 21 incidents of torture, 34 incidents of enforced disappearances, and two extrajudicial killings in the month of October this year. Pakistan, by inflicting these atrocities, primarily intends to suppress the voices of the Baloch community that has been demanding freedom from the clutches of Islamabad's rule. Even in the past, the people of Balochistan have found themselves on the receiving end of unclaimed terror attacks causing the loss of life and property. Previously, Mastung, a northwestern district of Balochistan, suffered yet another unclaimed bombing, which took place during a procession organized to celebrate the birth of Prophet Muhammad. At that time, more than 50 innocent people lost their lives and over a dozen were reported injured. Soon after the incident, Pakistan's Interior Minister Sarfraz Bukhti in a press briefing claimed that India's research and analysis wing was behind the attack. Organized presence जो है वो इस दशकगर तंजीम की बलूचिस्तान में इससे पहले नहीं थी। अब उनके ये जो हमले हो रहे हैं, जाहिर हम investigate कर रहे हैं। کہ بسا اوقات یہ ہوتا ہے کہ حملہ کوئی اور کرتا ہے قبول کوئی اور کرتا ہے جو مرضی ہو وہ داعش ہو وہ ٹی ٹی پی ہو وہ کوئی اور ہو کوئی بھی کسی بھی نام پر وائلنس کر رہا ہے وائلنس جو ہے وہ صرف سٹیٹ ایکسرسائز کرے گی وہ کوئی بھی اس سے ہمیں کوئی فرق نہیں پڑتا ہے ہم مزید جو یہ لوگ جو فیسلیٹیشن کا رول پلے کریں جو بھی کر رہا ہے وہ کوئی بھی ہو جو بھی اس کو آپ نام دے دیں ہمارے لیے یہ سب ایک ہے سب کی نانی ایک ہے سب کو ایک جگہ سے ہینڈل کیا جا رہا ہے را ان سب کے پیچھے اس سے پہلے جتنے واقعات ہوئے اس پر ابھی انویسٹیگیشن ہو رہی ہے جی اس سے پہلے جتنے واقعات ہوئے وہ سب انرت ہوئے جتنے بڑے واقعات بلوچستان میں اور سب کے پیچھے جو ہے وہ را کی انوالمنٹ رہی ہے اور جو وہ پاکستان کو جو قوتیں ڈی سٹیبلائز کرنا چاہتی ہیں ہم ان کے اگینس جائیں The people of Balochistan now face atrocities on both sides There is the Pakistan army on one side and an unidentified foe who orchestrates unclaimed terror attacks like the one in Mastung on the other. Still, the people of Balochistan have not given up on raising their voices even on the international stage, 
organizing protests year after year to make their voices heard. Baloch are facing an enemy that has the mindset of a religious extremist organization such as the ISIS. Pakistani state does not think or act like a state. Pakistani military is not a normal regular military who follows orders, who follow law. When it's come to Balochistan, the Pakistani army has been treating Balochistan as a colony. The Pakistani army might not be killing Baloch in thousands on a daily basis, but they're surely killing every day. They're surely abducting Baloch every day. They're surely torturing Baloch every day. It is the responsibility of the world. It is the responsibility of the so-called humanitarian organizations to act and to must stop the genocide is going on, which is going on in Balochistan. Adding to the persisting problem of terrorism, Pakistan also suffers because of political and economic instability. However, Islamabad still continues to support and nourish a habitat of terrorism within itself and remains a safe haven to several wanted international terrorists like Masood Azhar, Abdul Rahman Makki and Hafiz Saeed, all of whom are designated terrorists and are in imminent danger to international peace and tranquility. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Lipakshi Kurana signing off on behalf of the entire production of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.